G'day guys, welcome. Um, apologies for the lateness of this video. Um, still got 48 hours since uh, the final siren sounded. Um, there were reasons for not putting this together uh, yesterday. Um, one was I, I really needed to watch this, this one again um, based on the fact that a large majority of my focus had gone away from what was actually happening on the ground, um, when I say on the ground, the actual state of the play because of what happened to Cunners, David Cunningham, um, you know, I think that hit a lot of us. Um, I'm sure it would have felt, had some sort of impact on the ground with the players. It's no doubt, it has to. Um, whether that impacts the players in regards to, to the final result, not at all. I think, I think Melbourne are a far better team at the moment and, um, but certainly my focus was taken away. I, I was thinking a lot about him personally. Um, you know, I was really wrapped for the way he's come back um, into the team and, and, you know, just his whole sort of body language and his commitment appeared to have changed. He was really showing some really decent signs and for that to happen in the opening minute, um, I, was, I was concerned for his welfare. We knew, I knew, I think we all knew, um, it wasn't great the way he, he went up and then landed and then clutched at his knees and then was rolling in pain and the fact that they couldn't get him up, you know, for a period of time. And um, we knew it wasn't good. Um, we braced for bad news. And I, my, my thoughts were, you know, then on to how is this going to impact us right now in this game? Because uh, it's a big blow. Um, but also for us moving forward as well. You know, right up until half time, I was thinking about, and even the result in the end, I was sort of quite flat. So I wanted to watch the game again. It's actually worked out quite well that I'm doing this review now because like most of us, we're, we're pretty upset um, post game uh, at another loss and, you know, a, another loss in similar circumstances with similar things that have gone wrong and, you know, um, you know, I understand the, 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 the anger and the, the frustration for supporters, and I think that's starting to um, be felt, particularly from a, from a you know, supporter base in regards to how many were getting the games. I, I, I just thought, I know it was an away game, um, it was in a Melbourne home game, and I understand that, you know, Sunday, 3.20 is not always suitable with some people with kids' sport, etc. Um, but was dreadful um, from us. Uh, I'm not quite sure if people have jumped off. If you have, then that's your right. But yeah, I just felt a really sort of just sort of eerie feeling at the MCG, and we were really outnumbered um, from the Melbourne supporter base. And they're up and going. There's no doubt about that. They're up and going, and they should be really happy with where they're at at the moment. But I'm glad I'm doing this review now. Um, I've, I've had time to, to really reflect, watch the game again, and, and, and try and, and take some positives out of it. Um, but more of, of a sense of, of really trying to um, trying to stick fat um, and not and not panic and, and go too over the top at the moment. I think we're hearing a lot of hot takes, and that's everyone's right. Um, we're hearing a fair bit of abuse and and. Um, you know, doom and gloom. Um, I honestly don't think it's as bad as that. Um, certainly we have issues, um, and I've spoken about those consistently um, where I see they're at, but I'm more here for this episode to, or this review of this game, to, to maybe give David Teague and, and this group a little bit of support. Um, I, I honestly, I honestly think, and this this is by no means an excuse. It's just, it's just I think a, a reason um, and, a, and a perfectly uh, valid reason, I think, um, of where we're at and why we might appear to be progressing right here, right now. Um, I think we're, we're not particularly on an even playing field at the moment, and, and this is a lot of based around just stability. Um, and I mean stability on the field, not stability off it. I mean stability on the field. There might be some issues off the field. I, I'm not privy to any of that. I can only see what goes on on field um, and what takes, takes place on the ground. But we, we just can't seem to, to get 
the right mix on the ground based on a number of different factors. A lot of it to do with out, things out of it, our control, like injuries. Um, and when you come up against a team like Melbourne, who are afforded the luxury of having their best players on the ground for the best part of all year, and I'll talk about Melbourne in a sec in regards to probably we're in a similar boat to what they were a couple of years back. Um, it just shows in the way Melbourne play. Um, and they've gone from being, you know, like no one gave them the chance this time last year to, to suddenly becoming um, suddenly becoming a real force in the competition. And, and, you know, they've got a little bit to prove before the end of the year. Um, but suddenly, you know, in, in a matter of 12 months, they look, they look a really a really, really strong unit. And I, I think that's based obviously on the back of some really good coaching. Um, but I think really to do with stability on the field and getting the players together, the right players, um, the right mix, um, but a healthy, a healthy list. Um, and I don't think we've afforded that. So I think I'm not judging David T too harshly or this group too harshly at the moment. Um, because I think for the most part, we were pretty competitive and I think the effort was there and effort's non-negotiable, but you can't question the effort of the players. I mean, there were certain times you could question certain things, but overall, I think the effort was there. Um, and it's got a lot to do with personnel. It, it, it certainly has. And, and I, I'll just quickly talk about Melbourne. And I mentioned, um, you know, in 2018, this Melbourne Football Club, they, they, they made it through to a prelim final. Um, and I suppose this is the major difference to us because we haven't been to a prelim final yet. And there should be question marks on David T and the jury should be out. So we haven't been there. So we don't get that sample size of actually being there. But at the same time, they made that prelim final with a healthy list with the current, basically the current group, and they've had a couple since then. They had some fantastic finals wins at the MCG that year. They beat the Cats. They went across to the West and got their pants pulled down, but they won't be the only team to do that in a prelim final. Um, and they had massive expectations on their shoulders going into 2019. There was no doubt about that. Some, some... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure internally they believed it as well, but people were having him as a, as a real shot to, to do some real damage in 2019 and possibly, you know, win their first flag since, I think, 1964 or whatever it was. But um, it wasn't to be. I mean, they dropped in 2019 from from um, fourth on the ladder to 17th, second last. They had five wins for the season. That was a massive fall. Now, at the time, at the time... I remember it really vividly because I was actually at the time working in the media and I was following a lot of clubs really closely, including Melbourne. I had to for the job I was doing. And I remember them coming into that season in 2019 with a, with a massive injury list. Um, and look, it was identified. There was sort of people speaking about it, but no one, no one wanted to use it for them as a, you know, as a way out. Um, and they came in, the only expectation was of, of playing finals and, and finishing top four. Um, but they came into that season with, I think they had 10 or 11 players who had post-season surgery and they were racing against the clock, getting these players back. And some weren't just even ready to come back and didn't play in the opening round of the season. These are the names, Oliver, Tom McDonald, Jack Viney, Christian Petrarca, James Harms, Jake Melksham, Neville Jetta, um, and Mitch Hannon and Vandenberg all had postseason surgeries and all were racing against time to get back for round one. And not all of those players made it back. Some of those were rushed in, including Jack Viney, clearly underdone in that opening round of 2019. Okay, I just remember it. We were speaking about it pre-game. Not only that, they had Jake Lever out with a, with a long-term injury. He didn't make it back into round 12 of that year. And Stephen May, I'm not sure if he was injured or he may have been suspended from the year before, but he didn't come back until round two. They, they played quite well in the first quarter in that game against Port Adelaide at the MCG and then fell away dreadf dreadfully 
after half time and got ran over. Okay, and then it was pretty much their season was derailed in the first half of the season. Okay, based on the fact that they couldn't, they could not, they could not get their best players onto the park. Couldn't at all. So this is a team that made a prelim final and no one, no one would use it as an excuse. Okay, no one would bring it up. There was sure it was mentioned, but people were too afraid, too afraid to go, okay, this is what's happened. Because it was the whole narrative about, okay, Melbourne have got too far ahead of themselves. This is what Melbourne are about. Okay, they drink their own bathwater, blah, blah, blah. And that was the narrative. That was for the whole year. Okay, and then question marks started to come over Simon Goodwin. You know, and, and, you know, the wheels have fallen off, okay, he's under the pump. Um, and that's the way. Coaches are always under the pump, particularly if you fall that drastically. All right. Hit 2020 last year in the hub. They start to build again. It wasn't spectacular, but they built and built and built again. Started to get players back. Started to play a little bit better football. But there was always question marks, you know, related to Melbourne. All right. But they finished 13th, just outside the top eight. This year, this year, they've hardly had an injury. They've been able to keep this core group together, this really strong group that have been around together for a period of time now, plays in a sweet spot of their career. The only injuries, the real serious injuries they've had, it's taken Ben Brown a little bit of time to get into the team, and he's been there for now three weeks. Jack Viney went out for a couple of weeks. He's due back now. Uh, Luke Jackson went out for a week. He's due back this weekend. And the big long-termer is Tom Tomlinson. But they've been able to be able to carry, well, not carry, but bring in players to replace them. Obviously, Wiedemann came in. Uh, Petty came in to replace Tomlinson, chopped down back. Um, and young Jordan gets his opportunity in the midfield. And I'm sure he'll probably be replaced once Finey comes back. But they've got stability. And they're playing like a team okay, that trust each other because they've been together. They're not fragmented. They're not in one week, out the next week. Okay, players out of form, have to drop players. Okay, they know their roles. They know the system. They know the structure. They believe in it. Um, and it's coming very, very natural for them. Okay, and they obviously led very well through their captain in Max Gorn. And that was another decision they made to, to, to bring in Max Gorn as the captain. He's done a terrific job. But at the same time, we can just see, we can just see the stability. And they played on the weekend like a professional outfit because of this. Us, on the other hand, and this is where I think we need to just cut our situation just a little bit of slack. And I think it's virtually near on impossible to judge exactly where we're at until we, ha we are afforded, until we are afforded. Okay, that same opportunity to get at least at least near our best 22 on the park because you're never going to get your best 22 on the park. But we are nowhere near that. How can we judge this football team? How can we judge David T fairly? Fairly. And still, okay, we can get, okay, the best, well, near the best team on the park. Just near. And not only get them on the park, but keep them, keep them on the park for a period of time. Okay, I'm not here to talk about, you know, that's the job of, of the high performance manager and all that. Okay, sure. Okay. Maybe, maybe that needs to be scrutinized as well. But I'm talking about David Teague here. Okay, and I'm talking about this group and the way they're performing. All right, so let's have a look at the weekend, for example, and what transpired. Okay, what needed to transpire to try and win this game of football. And what clearly went wrong the week before against the Western Bulldogs, where in the end our midfield got smacked, particularly in clearances. And the weight of numbers, the weight of numbers, um, just in the end killed us. Okay, and our defence could not, could not, as brave as they've been or as good as they had been or whatever, they couldn't absorb that amount of inside 50s. So we needed to fix that part of our game. How are we going to do that? Okay. Do we bring in underperforming players from the VFL? That's another question. Okay. Who is actually busting and kicking down the door? Not politely tapping on it. Please give me a game. I'm playing reasonable football in the VFL. 
Okay, I mean actually busting and kicking the door down. Who was the last player at the Carlton Football Club that you can remember who's actually busted the door down and demanded a game of football? So we bring in Setters. Okay, he's played reasonable football. Reasonable. Okay, we bring him in. All right, and I'm not going to talk about that straight away. But what we wanted to do to structure up, we wanted to beef up that midfield. Okay, we're going to get a bit more run onto our wings. So we bring our co-captain, one of our generals from down back, who sound, found some real form in the last month. Defensively sound in the back half after two knee reconstructions, but also starting to win a lot of the football. And his disposal efficiency has really improved as well. So we take a general from down back to put up on the wing. All right, to beef up that area of the ground. And it's a major success. Tick David T. Great. Okay, Doc has an outstanding game, arguably our best player. I thought he was outstanding. Okay, we also take young Liam Stocker. He's plying his trade in the back line. And one thing he's done really well in the back line, okay, in the two games he's played there, has been his aggression, okay, and his ability to lock down on his opponent. Sure, okay, he probably hasn't won as much as the ball, as we would have liked, but he's been as solid as a rock and has given us, okay, some real grunt down there. Okay, we need to beef up this midfield, okay, so we bring him into the midfield, all right, and we all get our wish. We all get our wish, let's get, and we're all excited, put a tweet out before the game, Liam Stocker's Liam Stocker's warming up in the midfield and everyone's going, oh, fantastic, want to see him in there. Now, we bring him into the midfield because Zach Williams. Now, maybe maybe T should have dropped Zach Williams. Maybe he should have been dropped after last week's performance. Okay, maybe T needs to learn this as well. But who is there to bring in? Okay, who is actually busting the door down? All right? So we forced to send Zach Williams down back. Dreadfully out of form. Seems to be lacking a bit of conditioning. Can't get any continuity in his game because of the injuries, you know, the soft sort of soreness he's been having. First and foremost, he's, his job would be to lock down, okay? To lock down. Because we've already got Saad, all right? We've already got maybe Newman coming in. We've got a bit of run at that, but... Well, maybe not first and foremost to lock down, but you want to get him down there and go, okay, okay, we need you to do your job defensively, okay, and provide us a bit of run. But for me, Williams would have gone down there thinking, I need to find the ball. I need to get into form. I need to get into form. It's not a great mix to go down there for your first, first outing in defence alongside Nick Newman, okay, Dockey's replacement down there, playing his first game in defence. For 18 months, you've got Williams and Newman going into the defensive half. I'm not a huge Nick Newman fan. That's no disrespect. I thought he was on the nose before he got injured. Again, I think, yeah, he's a reasonable footballer and he used the ball. I don't think he's particularly good defensively. All right, so you've got those two boys. One trying to find his way, the second coming back from 18 months out. you also got a kid playing his fifth or sixth game in Luke Park, so you have it. Absolute Barry Crocker. He was all at sea. All right, there was no dock down there to give him some support, put her arm around him, whatever that may be. He was all at sea. Okay, it was it was arguably the worst worst game, and this is awful, awful, because I felt for it. And he'll need a bit of love during the week, and he will respond from this. But by God, Bailey Fritch just destroyed him and he would just look lost. And even when he got his hands on the ball, he panicked. But he was part of a, a relatively new, a relatively new back six or seven that's barely played together before. Then we had the situation forcing Doc out of there and the experience of Doc, it left pretty much, I don't trust Plowman as a general down there. Fuck me dead, I don't trust him as a general. It pretty much left Jacob Wiedering, okay, as the general, who was absolutely outstanding the week before against the Western Bulldogs. Ten grabs, killed Norton, seven contested, huge game. Get it, 
absolutely towed up and pushed out of the back half by Tom McDonald, who had an enormous impact on the game in that first half. An enormous impact. We got that matchup wrong. In fact, I don't think there was anyone else on the ground that could have played on Tom McDonald. And it certainly wasn't Jacob Wiedering. I think we were all a little bit, not so much full. He killed McDonald the year before, but McDonald was in dreadful form. This was a Tom McDonald, okay, that is absolutely burning at the moment. He was far too quick. He was far too, his, his endurance, he made Wiedering look sluggish. Um, and it will probably be a performance Jacob Wiedering would want to forget. Our defensive back seven or six was exposed and exposed badly. And this, okay, this was all on the back of Teague having to make some moves, okay, to bolster an area of the ground which has been a concern, which is the midfield. Um, Doherty, huge success. Huge success in his position on the wing. Can I just quickly go to the other wing, though, and what we're doing with our wings at the moment, which is just annoying me a little bit. And maybe I don't know the plan, whatever. So we had Doherty start on one wing, on Brayshaw, and on the other wing, which I wanted, we got, I got the matchup I wanted. I wanted Cottrell to go to Langdon because he can run all day. And what we know about Langdon, he runs and runs all day and works himself into the game. Anything, anything above 20 disposals is probably too much for Langdon. Cottrell started on him, right? you beauty. Then, 10 minutes into the game, 10 minutes into the, or seven or eight minutes into the first quarter, okay, and he was doing a reasonable job. I well, know it's early, but he was there with him. Wasn't getting any easy ball. I don't think Langdon had a touch in that opening. C C uh, Cotter's had a couple himself, a couple of good spoils. I'm thinking he's in for a hard day at the office this Langdon. This is the first time he's generally had a, a, a bloody guy that can run playing him, and I know Cottrell's limitations, he got taken off. Not not dragged, rotation. I think from memory, I think Setters come onto Doc's wing and Doc came up. And this happened for the whole game. They were, we were rotating our wingers, whereas Langdon pretty much stayed on that wing for the whole day and then gradually worked into it, the game until it became a major influence. So please tell me what the fuck's going on there. That doesn't make sense. If you want Cottrell to be in the team because of his running ability and because he can run just about anyone else on a football club off their legs and he has the ability to stay with Langdon for the whole game, why wouldn't you do that and use that? Sure, you need to come off for a minute here or there, but I think Cottrell played 90 minutes compared to Langdon's 114 or 115. He played something, I don't know. That, that was a bizarre decision. Bizarre decision. We need to work that out why we're rotating our wings, why Brayshaw pretty much stayed on his wing for the whole day and Langdon stayed on his, where they can work into the game. Very, very unusual. The other thing is, Cunners going down early certainly disrupted our midfield in regards to, okay, in regards to a point of difference. I thought our midfield battled away really well. I thought Cripps, Kernan, Walsh were good, good. Not outstanding, but good. Okay, and they restricted, our midfield actually restricted Melbourne to 52 inside 50s. And I said, we keep Melbourne to 52 inside 50s and our defence can actually stand up similar to what they have been. But because of the weakness of that defence and trying to bolster other area of the ground, because we haven't got the cattle because of injuries and poor form in the VFL, we're basically chasing our tail and robbing Peter to pay Paul. And then forward, okay, just when we start to get Jack, Silvani, and possibly Glove into some reasonable form, they're injured, they go out of the team. No control over, absolutely no control out of that. So we're talking about our back six being just all over the joint, then you look at Melbourne's back six. Other than Petty, They've all been together. Okay, Petty comes in to replace Tomlinson. Just the lockdown, just that lockdown third tour. Okay? Be a look at him. May, Lever, Hibbard, Rivers, Hunt and Salem have all played together for the whole year. 
and know each other's game backwards. And we didn't use the ball particularly well inside forward 50. But when you're pretty much relying on Harry Mackay to kick you the winning score, okay, to kick you, and he's pretty much, you're going to him probably 78% of the time every time you're inside forward 50, and your major aim is to kick the ball long because you haven't got a floating forward like a, like a Jack Silvani or a Charlie Kerno, okay, like a Bailey Fritch, then it's little wonder, okay, that our efficiency inside forward 50 was something like 33%. Okay, I didn't think our smalls worked hard enough at ground level. That was another concern, but they had previous to that. <sighs> so we can assess the performance, the performance as being not great. Okay, um, there were some positives, as I've mentioned in regards to some positional changes. Stock in the midfield, we wanted it, didn't we? He was an outstanding, 15 disposals and a nice goal, but we'd like to see him persevere with it. But that's what we're gonna get. We're going to get that probably level of performance from Stocker. You might get a, a spike in that and then it might go down. That's what we're going to get. And that's what you're gonna get with young players when they come into that position. We have to be realistic about that. Okay, the final one, and this is another, a little bit of a criticism. Why the fuck was Michael Gibbons the sub? I'm sure there's a, there's a reason behind it. There's a reason behind it. But, but Gibbons has played as a defensive forward for the whole year. He hasn't spent any time in the midfield. He certainly can't play back. He certainly played, can't play key position at a pinch. And I was gobsmacked to see Michael Gibbons come into the ground really early. Obviously, Cunningham went off. I just thought it was a wasted, a wasted opportunity. And I, I, I thought Jack News was probably the perfect sub, considering you can play on a wing, you can go forward, you can pinch down back. Yeah, I mean, he could even roll through the middle, middle at times. But if you're gonna be, if you're gonna play Gibbons, who's been out of form, why not play Josh Honey as your sub? Why not? Why not? Anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking fat. I'm sticking fat right here, right now, based on the fact that fuck, we did, we just can't take a trick. We cannot take a trick. All right, we cannot take a trick, and this worries me. And I think the guy with the biggest job at the football club, other than David T, the most important job, and he probably had the most important job before Cunningham and Marchbank and a whole host of other players have gone down and, you know, we want to get TDK back into the team and et cetera, is, is Nick Austin. Our new list manager, who's only been at the club now for what? short period of time. He's had one draft. Okay, he's had one draft. Fuck, he's got a big job. I'm sure he's up to it. I'm sure he's up to it. Um, but by God, by God, we have some some holes to feel, fill. Um, we really do. Um, which worries me moving forward. But let's, final point, let's, let's try and be empathetic to the coach. Okay, let's try and be empathetic. I don't know if he's the man for the job. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is he needs he needs an opportunity, okay? For one, he hasn't coached for that long. But for two, for fuck's sake, what has he got to work? What has he truly got to work with? If we're basing him on, if we're basing him on trying to beat the best teams in the competition, the best teams in the competition, what are we marking him on if he can't get somewhere near his best team on the park? Let's be fucking serious here. Because we're shown with this team that we can beat an Essendon and a Fremantle on the Gold Coast. We've shown that. But we're shown we can't because it, it, the talent, okay, the talent is, is, is very thin. 
All right, that's enough. I'll be back later on in the week to do a really, really interesting, a really interesting preview for a really interesting game against the Hawks this Saturday at Marvellous Stadium. So I'll catch you soon.